We're going to clink some of these bells again. Twelve, twelve. Welcome in, welcome in. Third time's a charm. We're giving this the biggest college try we can. Welcome in, Dream Angel. How's it going? We are third time's a charm in it. We're trying our hardest. <laughs> Good morning. We're trying our hardest. We've had to go out and in twice already. I'm about to lose it. <laughs> Not really, but you know. Welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? You working? Yeah, a lot of people are. Yeah. It's kind of that energy today. I feel like it's like that get her done energy. Like that grind energy, you know. Welcome in, guys. The list is open. We are doing 12-12. We got Cash App, we got Venmo, we started the live at 12.12 this third time. <laughs> We've been trying to get rolling for about 20 minutes now. <laughs> Welcome in. Working from home. Um, you have to be very dedicated. I feel like you have to have good discipline in order to work from home. I know a lot of people that just can't seem to pull it together when they're working from home. It's like because they're in their house, it has a different kind of energy. And like separating the working from the relaxing energy is sometimes difficult for people who work from home. So, you know, not always easy. Not always easy. I know that. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Super Mama, how's it going? How's everybody doing today, man? I'm giving this one more shot and then I'm just going to assume this, this ain't it today. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give it one more shot. The list is open. The list is open. We got Cash App. We got Venmo. We're doing 12-12 for reads today. If you guys would like something felt into, let us know. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like, don't get me wrong. Like, if you're somebody who's disciplined and can, you know, kind of light your own ass on fire, then, yeah, working from home is fantastic. But if you struggle with that and you struggle with forming a routine and stuff like that for yourself, then it's, yeah, it's not easy. You know what I mean? It's not easy. But I enjoy doing what I do. I enjoy being my own boss. Um, you know, because then, like, in a way, it's like, well, there's no one here to motivate, you know, but you. So, welcome in, guys. This is the third time. We're giving this the old college try. If you are in here, please smash that screen. Please share the live. We need to get on out, out on FYP in order for us to be able to do what we need to do here. The list is open today. We're going to pop off with Collective as soon as we get enough people in the room. So please keep tapping that screen. Please keep sharing the live. Say hi in the comments. I appreciate saying hi to everybody. Whew. List is open. We're doing 12-12 today. We got Cash App and we got Venmo. So if you guys would like something felt into, like... Aw! Keel, how's it going? Keelsroy? Keelst? Keelst? Kells? Kelsroy. Keelsroy. Keels? Troy. Keels Troy. Okay, I hope I'm not saying your name. I'm, I'm probably butchering it. However, welcome in. Welcome in. We are struggle busting hard with... Got it. <laughs> She's like, I know it's me. Just stop. We are trying hard <laughs> to kind of get started here. Talk is not liking us today. We are on, I guess, an anti, anti-friends anti list on Talk. I don't know. But we're trying so hard. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's see if I can see what we got going on. Oh goodness. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this today. Maybe maybe my team's just like, nah, don't do it. <laughs> like I've never had so much trouble getting on live. I've never had so much trouble. I haven't even had this much trouble day one. This is wild. Welcome in, welcome in. Do 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 da. I'm, I'm assuming that that do de, do boop do doobity 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 da. I think that's what that said. <laughs> welcome in. <laughs> welcome in. <laughs> I got like ten more minutes of trying, and then I'm just over it. <laughs> I got ten more minutes of trying, and then I'm over it. <laughs> Welcome in, guys. The list is open. <laughs> the list is open. We're doing reads today. So if you would like something felt into, <laughs> let me know. Come in. <laughs> Come and say hi. <laughs> well, list is open. We're doing 12-12. We got Cash App. We got Venmo. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Long time no see. Long time no see. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing good on this wild Thursday I, like, don't even know what's happening. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's definitely appreciated. Um, talk is trying my energy today. <laughs> As this is the third time we're attempting to go live. And, um... <laughs> it's just... The struggle is real today, apparently, when it comes to technology and the algorithm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> If you guys have collective questions, thank you for the follow, Kielstroy. I feel, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. I feel like that can't be it. <laughs> if you guys have collective questions, you can drop them down in the comment section. Just keep in mind, collective questions are questions that don't require me to feel directly into your energy for the answer. But maybe they're on a spiritual topic, or maybe you want to share a win, or... Something like that. Just know that you guys can always drop that down in my comment section. And I will be honest if it's something I can't answer. Um, I'll just become flat out and be like, I can't answer that. So, but the list is open. We're doing 12-12. We got Cash App and we got Venmo. And I'm just trying to get a few more people in here so we can throw collective. And if it just doesn't happen, then I guess I'll just see you guys on tonight. And I'll go do other things. I'll go do other things. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. I stole the cupcakes. Is that what that handle just said? That's fantastic. Sometimes your guys' handles are absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like, there was one that was like, I'm not the biggest jelly donut. And I was like, that is the longest. But it was funny. It was funny. I feel like I need to tell... We're just going to go with Collective. Like, we're just going to go with the Collective. And then if it's still, like, toilet bowl, then we'll we'll pop off. So, I feel like, though, collectively, I feel like I need to tell you that your hard work was not in vain. That's the way I want to say it. Your hard work was not in vain. And it is happening. It's just happening extremely slowly. You're talking about how you're kind of a quick mover. You move very quickly. You're somebody who just sees it and goes for it. Or once you make a decision, it's like, watch out, here I come. And they're just talking about one of the biggest things that is going to be part of your spiritual journey is mm, pausing. It's going to be your patience. It's going to be taking your time. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be doing all of the... Uh, all of the growth kind of slowly because they want you to start kicking in your feeling. So they're talking about how this part of the collective kind of moves a little bit too quickly. And when you move too quickly, you miss a lot because you're rationalizing with your brain, but you're not internalizing with your feelings. Your energy is not involved in the way that it should. And as we have the death card that just popped out here, as we're talking about your transformation with your healing, and they're talking about how... Sometimes your constant go, go, go is actually one of your biggest burdens. It's actually one of the biggest things that you end up cutting yourself on. 12, 
22 on the clock. You end up slicing yourself on. You end up hurting yourself accidentally on. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for all the shares. And they're just talking about how this is something that is slowly being revealed to you, but you don't like it. That's the way I want to say it. It's slowly being revealed to you how you're the biggest player when it comes to hurting yourself. When it comes to disappointing you, you're the biggest player in that. And they're talking about how sometimes your go, go, go is unrealistic in the way that you give no time for yourself. You don't allow yourself to recoup, refresh. There's no recharge for you. It's a, uh, oh, well, I guess I have to. And it's almost like out of this obligation. And this is what they're kind of talking about is that you're, I don't want to say you're running out of energy, but you feel almost, I'm going to use the word burnt out. You feel burnt out at times. And they're talking about they want you to kind of go inward. And I'm getting a lot of masculine energy here. They want you to kind of go inward and really ask yourself what you need. They're wanting you to reflect a lot. They're saying that that's one of the major things that you're missing on your journey is reflection. Like you'll go in and if you take a second for yourself, but it's like you almost take a second for, to yourself to plan for the future. You don't take a second for yourself in order to do in order to do other things, in order to reflect, give yourself some kudos, to be nice to yourself, to show yourself grace, to show yourself some love. No, it's like you start just all of a sudden planning the next steps. And they're just talking about how you're so forward thinking that it's hindering you from being present. You're so forward thinking that it's hurting you in the physical. Like almost too much logic. And they're talking about how this is running you right smack into your tower. Like whether you realize it or not, this way of operation for you is running smack into your tower. <laughs> As we had the patience card that just popped out. As we had the patience card that just popped out. All all after you resisting your tower so hard. <laughs> you resisting your healing in your tower so hard. We got the devil card out here. Further confirmation for how you're doing it to you. If like how you're the person who's making it so hard for you. You're the one in your way. You're the one keeping you in this box that defines you that nobody else has put you in but you. They're giving me like this weird energy that almost like you're somebody who gives... I almost say gives up on yourself because that's not the word. Um... You're almost somebody who, like, disappoints. Like, you disappoint yourself, and you look at it as though you're always disappointing yourself. Like, it's one of these kinds of a lenses where it's like there's always this kind of negative ting to the lens. There's always this kind of negative filter on your lens as far as it goes for self-realizations. As far as it goes for self you know, healing, growing problems. You're the first one to point out what you didn't do and the last one to point out what you did do. And they're just talking about how if you're going to view everything as, well, there's room for improvement because I could have did these 10 things before you tell yourself congratulations. This is one of your biggest hindrances is what they're talking about. This is one of the biggest things that's keeping you stuck in, and I'm going to call it your cycle, because it's like a self-sabotage, self-destructive cycle that you have made for yourself. <laughs> and they're just talking about they want you to do something new. I got nine out on the table, but you're still resisting it. You're resisting doing something different, and it's almost as though you're like pretending to yourself. We got the butterfly, the need for transformation. You're almost like pretending to yourself that this works for you. Like you've almost convinced yourself, like, oh no, this is it. This works for me. Um, I'm the best I could be, and this is really good. But you're almost measuring yourself like logistically, like with facts and figures. And you're almost too structured and too rigid to where you're like treating your, yourself, your body, your emotions like a machine. And they're talking about how you couldn't be anything further from the machine and it's not best serving you, it's hindering you. This is part of your towers to realize that you're the cause of all of this. The way that you limit yourself, the way that you box yourself, the way you speak to yourself. They're talking about how, as we had, the, as we had this stuck and trapped card out here, they're literally talking about how this is something that has been difficult for you to break free from. This is something that has been truly a struggle. 
Now, I feel as though you need to mix it up. And I feel as though you're forgetting who you are. And when I say forgetting who you are, I do actually mean like your beginnings. What inspired you? What drove you? What made you want to do this in the first place? Like you're just kind of losing sight of the reason you fell in love with this. And the reason that you fell in love with you. And the reason that you're doing what you set out to do in the first place. And this is part of that reflection. They're asking you to get more connected. So this part of the collective that we're, this little subsection that we're talking about is somebody who's almost resisting the connection because in order to be connected, you would have to realize one, there's an issue and it has to do with you Two, that you'd have to come to terms and have enough balls to admit that it's not okay, that you're not okay. So you would have to let that mask that everything's fine slip a little bit in order to get down to the you behind the mask that's like this ain't okay anymore like i'm kind of over this this is your rock bottom this is your climb up we have the death card and the fool both out both out here as a bridge this is what you're working through you're working through breaking out of the chains that have kept you stuck you're working through your connection and realizing just how actually powerful you are this is what this part of the collective is working on right now. A lot of people are in their receiving state, but the people who are fighting their towers, this is where you are. You're still behind the receiving state, and it's not that you're like, need to catch up. No, that's not it. It's that you can join them anytime you want, but because you're refusing to look at your tower with different lens, you're refusing to to see things in the universal clarity, you're keeping yourself in the rat race. You're keeping yourself on the hamster wheel that has been making you less satisfied and less satisfied as you go. So this is what they're talking about when they, we start feeling into that subsection of the collective. Welcome in, guys. How's it going? I'm hoping third time was the charm. We've been trying. We've been trying. Thank you so much for the follow. Praying I pass my test in a work, oh, at work, I'm sorry. Praying I pass my test at work in a bit, ugh. Oh my goodness, you're going to pass it. Don't even question it. Know that you have already passed it. If you've done everything you could, then don't stress because you either know it or you don't. You know what I mean? And I don't, I think that you're going to pass it just fine. Lisa, thank you for the follow. Wendy, thank you for the follow. Thank you for the share. Lisa, did my husband cheat on me with Tanya? Um, I can't answer that because it would require me to feel into your husband's energy and that's bad energetic ethics and I won't be able to do it. Um, Natasha Johnson. Okay, let me check. Thank you for the follow, Kendra. Thank you for all the gifts, Miss Kendra. GL, how's it going, dude? Let me uh, let me check for you, Miss Nikki. Hold on. Thank you for all the gifts, Miss Kendra. GL, how's it going, dude? Let me. In my back. In my. In my back. In my back. All right, Miss Nikki, I got you on the list. The list is open, guys. It is twelve twelve. We have Cash App and we have Venmo. If you would like something felt into, maybe you have a question, or maybe you have a topic, or maybe you don't know what you want at all, and that's okay. You don't have to know. We can just do spirit led, and that's called the general. So it's okay. Now, Miss Nikki, are you still in the room, honey? All right, perfect. Do you have... Oh, I'm sorry. Are you Natasha? Do you prefer Natasha or do you want me to stick with Nikki? I don't know where I got Nikki from. I just want to make sure I'm not like making you mad if you don't like the nickname. Um, Nikki's good. Okay, two Ks. All right, cool. Two Ks. All right, so um, do you have a specific topic or question that you would like felt into? Um, or that's what everyone calls me. <laughs> So it's up to you. Do you have a topic or a question? 
Mostly regarding my love life. Okay. Okay, so... So, just the topic of love and relationship for Miss Nikki. Okay. Alright, not a problem. Not a problem. The list is open, guys. If you would like to get on the list, it is 12-12. We got Cash App. We got Venmo. Please keep tapping that screen. We are fighting TikTok. Something fierce today. So, all of your taps do make a difference. A big difference. Alright, Miss Nikki. I'm sorry. I missed the second part. I missed the second part of your question. Yeah, there is. There is. Minx. There definitely is. I'm in the midst of separating from the past situation ship. Ooh. And I'm torn if I should. Okay. So. So you have an option. Um. You have an option. I can ask the question like that. Is separating from the current relationship in Nikki's greatest, highest good? Or we can just do a general and not steer the ship at all. So it's totally up to you. Just let me know if you'd rather have me ask a question or if you want it just to be like a general love. That's good. Okay, cool. All right. So is it in your greatest, highest good? All right. Do you have sassy guides? Do you have guides who um, talk to you very... I'm a very, like, casual vernacular. And the reason... Um, and the reason I'm kind of, like, 1234 saying that is because um, I haven't even asked the question yet. And I'm getting eye rolls. And I'm getting girl... From like the far corner over here, um, <laughs> so I ah, this is gonna be fun. Makes me feel like they're about to whoop your booty. Um, all right, so is separating from Nikki's relationship in her greatest highest good. That's the way we're gonna say it. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And they're talking about how you've gotten so far away from who you actually are. And you've kind of uh, lost yourself during this whole relationship. And they're talking that my back is getting super cold. And then they're talking about how you're not the same person you were before, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because they're calling it lessons learned. Um, but they're talking about how you need to be honest and frank with yourself because this ain't it. Like, that's the way they're saying it. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to have a frank conversation with yourself because there's a lot about this that is not okay. And that's the way that they're saying it. There's a lot about this love relationship this um, that isn't always conducive for your health um, in a lot of different ways. Um, they're kind of honing in on stress um, and a little bit of like your unhappiness as a whole. Not only unhappy in the relationship, but they are lending towards unhappy with just you. Like you feel as though you're not the best you right now and you're not really sure what to do, but they're talking about how you've kind of made a home in this uncomfortable relationship, in this not... Um, the best all the time kind of situation is what they're saying. And they're talking about how this whole decision has just caused a lot of indecision for you because I do have, I do have the two of swords out here, but they're almost talking it as the way is like, you're almost talking yourself out of it and you're almost like, like what's that procrastinating? You're almost procrastinating your new beginning. That's the way that they're saying it. You're procrastinating your new beginning <laughs> somewhere else. Your new, your new fulfillment, your new joy, your new you. You're procrastinating it because there's something about the chaos that that comes along with this relationship that you have built 
foundations or some sort of sense of security in. And it's almost like you'd rather deal with the devil you know than deal with the devil you don't know. So it's because you know what's going to happen, because you can see this person, because you can read this person, because this is a very cyclistic, patterny relationship. It's also predictable. And they're saying because it's so predictable, you find comfort in it because it's not really out of your comfort zone if you know the routine. Is it stressful? Yes. Does it hurt you? Yes. Do you, do you have a lot of issues and struggles and problems? Yes. However, you know they're coming and you can foresee it. They're kind of talking about how it's been a long time coming. That's the way they're saying it. It's been a long time coming. I have pentacles here and they're, they're talking about how it didn't just happen overnight. This has been like, I'm going to call it a snowball effect to where it slowly builds and how it's been kind of slowly moving towards that direction. And they keep talking about how you don't feel special. Like, I don't, I don't know if this person doesn't give you special treatment or you don't get um, that moment. No, I don't mean like the toxic worshiping. That's not what I mean. But like that kind of like so, like somebody separates you and makes you special because you're their person. And they're talking about how this type of... And I'm, my back is so cold right now. This type of a relationship doesn't make you feel special. Doesn't make you feel on the top of the world is the way that they're saying it. <laughs> we got the Six of Swords, which is literally talking about how this is your time to move forward. But it's not just physical movement. It's emotional movement. Because you see all this, like I feel like the need to tell you this. Like You see all this, I, I can't really see when I hold it up, but you see the red that's going to be somewhere down in this corner. This is all the pain that you're washing away from. You're heading away from the shore. This is all the shit that you're letting go of. All of that red. That's your torment. That's your your battles fought. That's your that's you moving away from those things. This is not for you. The problem is it's become a security blanket for you in the way of you just you know what's coming. And this is going to be it's going to force you to redefine not only how you communicate emotionally with yourself, but how you communicate with others. Shut up. Shut. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. What were we just talking about? Communicating with yourself and others. We have the communication and the kindness card. This is going to redefine how you communicate with yourself and others. And you're going to have to work hard on it. Because you're going to beat yourself up and you're going to leave. And the very first gut feeling that happens is you're going to be like, oh, I made a mistake. No, you didn't. Mm -mm. Don't have any remorse. No, you didn't. You did not. Not based on what's out here. You did not. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest. And I feel like you know you're not making a bad decision. Like, this is where we need to be honest with ourselves. I feel like you know you're not making a bad decision. I feel like you know that this isn't for you. It was to teach you something. It was. I honestly feel like it was more to show you your worth. Shut up. Shut up. Trust your instincts, and it's exactly what they're talking about. Trust your instinct. It's here to help you grow and nothing else. This is what they're pushing you towards. It's for your own personal growth. Now, I feel like we could take a step further, and my ear's ringing now. We could take a step further, and let's kind of get... Let's kind of get just a little bit into it. Were you naive? Were you a little bit um, innocent in this relationship and the fact of um, when you, you went into it, you were, um, I don't want to say all hopes and dreams, but it's kind of giving me slightly gullible. It's kind of feeling a little bit uh, naive to things in the beginning until you could no longer ignore them. I'm going to be honest, I feel as though you're going to choose the path of least resistance. Um, and I say that because we have our peaceful warrior card out here. And it's right after your trans your, your transition. It's right after your death and your rebirth. It's right after you decide that this isn't part of your journey and you let it go. Like It's right after reestablishing who you are. And I feel the need to tell you, like I don't know if you're super spiritual or excuse me, transmutation, or if you delve with a lot of metaphysical beings, that's the way I want to say it, metaphysical beings, 
But I feel the need to tell you that you have, I, I want to call it like a baby dragon. Um, but I just mean baby in the fact that it's showing itself as small. It's not showing itself as like this large thing. Um, but there's like this, there's like this little, like I'm going to call it like a protector dragon. That's the way that I want to say it, only it's appearing very tiny. And I don't know if it's appearing tiny in order to stay out of your awareness. And I'm like pulling the cat out of the bag. Like, Oops. Or if it's just kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say young because they're usually pretty ancient creatures. But like, it just is giving me the protection feeling. And, and as though you have a watcher and a guide through part of this that is metaphysically influenced and is not directly your spirit team. Does that make sense? Like, there is this lingering... It's giving kind of like a snaky kind of a dragon, like uh, almost like a Chinese kind of a dragon, where it's more serpent-like than actually uh, winged. Um, but I just want to let you know, if you ever see things above you, and this is going to sound so crazy, so just follow me, I'm so sorry. If you ever see things above you and it feels like it casts a shadow and it goes away and you're like, how did I see that? Because it's physically should have been above my head. Or you ever just feel like you have something like looming over you, but it doesn't feel like it's standing over you. It just feels like, like you, that it has your back. I feel like they need to tell you this is your little baby dragon is the way that I'm going to call it because it's, there's something about this this dragon and I don't know if it's tied to if it's like bridging you towards your connection and other things but just know that you have you have a very important baby dragon that is helping you through your transitional state because they're calling you vulnerable now I feel as though you're going to choose the path of least resistance if you haven't already I feel as though you don't really like to fight that often I feel as though you're somebody if you could avoid a fight you will um, this is the kind of energy that I get from this. And when I say that, you, like, you may break it off via text and then block. You may write a letter or an email and block. Like, it's like you almost, like, you relay the news and then you just don't want to deal with it. Ugh. Like, it's almost like you might end up going, like, I don't know what's the word, like, uh... Like, you're just, you're not doing it to instill a rise. That's the way that I want to say it. Like, where some people will do a breakup to instill a rise. Like, you're not. Like, this actually hurt. Like, this actually hurt. Um, this is not something that you just do for funsies or attention. Like, this actually hurt. Um, and you're not here. My back, my back is getting so cold. You're not here to, like trigger somebody because you're trying to get a rise in order to prove that he's into no it's just like you're at that point where you're just like i just i don't want to hurt anybody but i just can't do this so it's almost like you're kind of also in that back and forth be like well i don't want to hurt his feelings i don't want to do this no like this is but this is that goodness in you like they're 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 bringing light to the fact that this is your gentleness this is your feminine this is also your child not wanting to make waves, not wanting to make ripples, not wanting to cause hurt, harm, or danger. Like, this is your innocence shining through, and this is part of that naivety that was showing through in the beginning, because this is actually a foundational essence of who you are. So they're talking about how you're somebody who avoids these types of things if you can help it. Um... And I feel the need to tell you that you might not be able to help it this time. I feel the need to tell you that you're going to do everything that you need to do and that you're going to try to do to avoid uh, furthering conflict with whatever is happening um, in the completion of this type of a cyclistic relationship. Um, but that you may receive a little bit of, of pushback. But... Your dragon's kind of talking about the fact that he wants you to be very, like, he's very adamant on the fact that this is not a reflection on you, but this is a reflection on the person you were dealing with, because he's talking about he wants you to have your eyes open and see things with clarity, and when he means that, he means watch how somebody responds and they'll tell you who they are. And that's like, they'll tell you what they haven't dealt with. They'll tell you, you know, what's still lingering. They'll tell you how you, they really feel, quote unquote. And this is kind of what 
he wants you to open your eyes to is because you're almost too forgiving, you're almost too nice, you're almost too kind sometimes in the fact that you kind of ignore your intuition and you ignore what you're being, like what your body is and your energy is pinging on as not being okay. So he's just kind of saying that he wants you to open your eye. And I feel like that's why I have this Ace of Swords here. I feel like this is your clarity regarding the balance that you bring as you move away. Like regarding the balance that you bring as you move away from a lot of these spaces and places and these things. And I feel like they tell you that your luck's going to turn around. And when I mean luck, I do mean luck. Because I feel like that might be the way that you describe it. I feel like it might not be abundance for you. It might not be karma. It might be luck. Um, or this could just have to do with the fact that it's a dragon and he's talking. <laughs> it's possible. Um, but if you've been feeling kind of down and out, they're saying it's changing. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. As you're feeling down and out, as you're feeling left out, as you're feeling knocked around, your luck is changing. Literally the wheel of fortune. Literally, so that's your confirmation. So your answer is, yep, keep what you're doing. Uh, this is for a short time, not a long time. And they're saying that you know and you're going to start learning your worth throughout this whole thing and but you do have a you do have a protector and I really do feel like like you feel like he's around whether you can rationalize what it is it is really pulling me towards this like snake like kind of dragony energy um but he's coming off kind of tiny which is kind of interesting I don't know that I've ever really seen them super tiny but um he's coming off very tiny and I don't know if it's just as to not intimidate you um, with his energetic presence or if it's literally to go unnoticed and we kind of just rip that out the bag <laughs> but um, yes do you have I'm going to scroll through all of your um, thank you so much for the follow boo I'm going to scroll through all of your comments Miss Nikki if you need anything clarified on what was said uh, let me know in the comments and we'll see if we can kind of do that for you um, midst of separating from my past, that is good. Is so okay. So Ken, is someone involved currently in my life sending a ooh, 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 or uh oh, is that uh oh? Is it sending me uh oh? Um, I mean, we can feel into that. We would just have to re. We would have to redirect to the question. So we would have to be like, are you receiving like an evil eye or something like that? Um, we would have to turn it back on your energy. Um, and then we can try to look in, is it intentional? Is it unintentional? Because I feel like a lot of people don't think about that. Like so a lot of times that evil eye, that negative ick is unintentional. It's more of a projection. So we can try to feel into that for you if you want. List is open. Everything's 12-12 today. Yes, we talk as if they are. <laughs> You're spot on. They've been telling me for a while, but I know I have to do it. <laughs> girl, girl, we are not dragging our feet. Yes, that was such a kicker for me. I felt the way I spiked up for myself and ended it in a no contact. You did go no contact. That's exactly what happened. Yes, very naive and innocent. I've always known each other since we were kids, so I had rose-colored glasses. Oh, Jesus. I know Baby Dragon is there. <laughs> they pop it when needed. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Hey, eyes, dude, if it's a, if it's a symbol for you to, dude, like, go ahead and take it, because sometimes we ha we're here and we listen to things, and they're directed at others, but sometimes Spirit will use others' messages to send us signs or synchronicities. So if it felt like it resonated for you, something about the dragon as well, like, know it's meant to resonate. And my back's getting cold as I'm saying this. So that goes for anybody in the room. Sometimes, you know, they give us signs or messages and other people's messages. So just take it too. Yep, it's like feeling that someone is standing in the room and I know that there's no one there. I had to pull my energy back and it was really difficult and still is. He pulls my energy all the time with no contact. I feel him constantly. Thank you for the follow. 
My situation ship pulls on. Oh, oh, oh my god. That would have been awful. I almost, oh, I almost did it again. I almost blocked you. I'm so sorry. My situ, my situation ship pulls on my energy all the time. Almost like he doesn't want to let me go. Um, when was the last time you called your energy back? Like, have you, have you rescinded all permission? And I know you said you no contacted him. Have you not been peeking? Have you not been wondering what is going on? Oh, yeah. So if you haven't cut ties energetically, and I don't necessarily mean like a candle cord cut, which, I mean, you could. You know what I mean? Um, I just try to deter my thoughts. Well, rescind, rescind permission. Like, tell your team. Tell your team, tell tell your energy, focus on cutting your energetic cords, you know? You could do something super simple, like conjure him up in your mind. I know that sounds weird, but conjure him up in, up in your mind. So like, place intention on your energy with this connection in particular, right? To help intensify it. And then it's, I call back my energy from this person in this time, place, you know, dimension, you know. For my greatest, highest good, you know, I release all energy that's not mine. Um, I always say kind of like a callback at the end of every day anyway. Like, I call my energy back to me from every person, place, or thing in this dimension or others that no longer serves my greatest, highest good. I release all energy that's not mine. I do that every day. Sometimes I do it throughout the day. You know what I mean? So. Um... Are you able to do career type readings? Ah, uh, yeah, we can focus it on whatever, Miss Allie. Yeah, that's not a problem. Last time I had a media ship by you, it was a family member. So you saying dragon is crazy and where? Oh, <laughs> hey, take it, take it, eyes. You know what I mean? I do peek, but mostly so that I know what's going on and I won't have any surprises from him. No, you can't do that. No, don't do that. Hmm. Because you got to understand by you peeking, oh yeah, it is Miss Allie, by you peeking, you're now establishing a new energy cord. Does that make sense? So by you peeking, because here's the thing, you initiated no contact. So if you initiate no contact and then continue to peek, you got to ask yourself why you're peeking. So are you looking for a rise from him? And hoping he does something kind of like, you know, you're waiting for the shoe to drop. You're waiting for him to do something stupid. Because if you're a high vibrational person, then I would tell you to put your energy into manifesting a timeline where he doesn't do that. If you're a high vibrational person, I would tell yourself to put your energy. Welcome in, JC. I would tell yourself to pull your put your energy in a place that that's not possible. So if you're high vibrational, then that means that you can you can command your energy so you can literally be like I do not allow this person to pull on my energy. I do not allow myself to go there. But then it's also the self discipline of when you get the urge, you have to slap yourself out of it and go, No. No, I don't need to do that. Because you gotta ask yourself, what are you looking for? Like what are you hoping to see? Like you know what I mean? Like, you know, that's one of those things. It's like, what are you hoping to see when you look, you know? So you got, you got to, you got to be disciplined, you know? So you can't say that you don't want him pulling on you and then you go seeking him out. That don't make no sense. You either don't want him pulling on you or you do because it makes you feel wanted because it, whatever, you know what I mean? Because it, it perpetuates, it perpetuates the push pull. So if you don't want the push pull from his energy, that's in your control to get, to cut out, especially if you claim a new high vibrational. So you already know how to do what you do. So now let's do what you do so that it works for you, right? You know. And if it's one of those things, like if you feel as though you have a soul tie, then you're gonna have to do some work because that's going to be a very well established energy cord. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's not just about cutting cords, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand that. It's about, with your free will, choosing what to pay attention to. 
You know what I mean? So if you feel as though the cord has been established either through several lifetimes or at least just, like you said, from childhood, from this lifetime, it's still an established cord. So even if you're not ready to cut the cord, you can still command your energy and control where you put it. It's yours. So that's where the discipline comes in. You know what I mean? You know? Thank you so much for the follow, Ginger. So, Miss Nikki, I hope that helps. But just start start telling yourself, like, nope. And it'll, it'll kind of sizzle out a little bit. Um, the only times that I really haven't seen um, something like that stop is with a very, very involved either soul ties or, like, quantum entanglement kind of things. That's the only times when I've ever seen that not really ever stop but it lessens to a much more manageable level to where it's not obsessively thinking obsessively push pull upset like if there's no over the top it'll lessen a little bit to where it's not every second of every day like and it it does get a little bit better but it only gets better when you get more strict and when you get more disciplined with yourself and your energy um and that's like the whole honest truth like that's like no bs um and I know, I know because I've been there. Like, I know because I've been there. Like, it gets better. And yeah, you may still feel that person from time to time, but you decide what you do with it. It's a feeler, right? So you're just in tune with energy coming in, into contact, thinking about you, pulling on you, but you could still decide what you do with it, right? Because you're still in control of your energy. So don't give your control away to anybody, ever. Like, step one, you want to get connected, you control what you allow. Set your boundaries. Energetic boundaries are super important, just like physical boundaries. You know what I mean? You set a physical boundary for no contact or blocking or whatever, right? So now you got to back it up with an energetic one, right? Because that's either what you want or it's what you don't. And then you got to get real honest and frank with yourself. You know what I mean? Like like the card said, you got to get real honest with yourself, you know? So I hope that helped, Miss Nikki. If you ever need anything, dude, just let us know. We're always on here. We got a private website if you need, like, one-on-one -on -one help commanding your energy. Like, we can do it. Like, don't worry. Thank you so much for all the follows. Thank you for all the likes. All right, Miss Allie, let me go check, and I'll be right back. Let me go check. I will be right back, Miss Allie. Hold on. What is that? Bethany? Bethany? Is that Bethany? Hold on. I literally came to TikTok to search for bringing my energy back. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah! We do that all the time, Miss Bethany. Oh, energetic hygiene. So, okay, so go on our website. And I'm not selling a private service. We have a free tree of knowledge. There is energy, uh, energetic hygiene, spiritual hygiene, and there's energy recall. There's a whole article on uh, a way to recall your energy that's something really simple, um, but it kind of gives a little bit of a better breakdown as to why it's important. And then we have several, like, bath teas and, like, all of these other things that will help grounding and this, if you're really into energy and stuff like that. Um, go check it out. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you're not a member, you should become one because if you're one of my subscribers, you get five points every single month you're a member. You might be already, though, but um, if you're not, it's 100% free. Membership doesn't cost you anything, but you should check it out. We have over 100 articles on the free tree of knowledge, and it goes through everything. So there's a whole section that's like energetic hygiene or spiritual practices, something like that. But you'll you'll find so much there. Let me go check Miss much there. Let me go check Miss Allie. All right, Miss Allie, thank you for waiting. It is much appreciated. 101 on the clock, so you know that this is going to be good, Miss Allie. All righty. So do you have, I know you said career, but do you have a specific question or topic? Um, like as far as what about career that you would like felt into? Thank you so much for being here, guys. If you are here, please smash that screen. 
It does help us stay out on FYP, and it helps new people know that we're here. Miss Allie, are you still here, dude? Hope we didn't lose you. Man, whatever comes up, I'm so lost about my career right now. So you just want, like, general, like, career? Okay. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Damn. <laughs> Damn. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often in the first two pulls. <laughs> oh. I know you say you're confused about your career, um, and I guess my humanness, like, took that one way, um, but I feel like, I feel like spirit's kind of taking it a different way, um, do you feel like, almost like, <laughs> weighed down by a sense of, like, responsibility or duty, like, I'm getting a lot of, like, self-limiting. Like, you're limiting yourself to either what you can do or what you're allowed to do in your current job or current situation mindset. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest. Um, the self-limiting is kind of what you're working through right now. Um, I feel as though that urge to want something different... Excuse me, transmutation. The urge to want something different is coming up here. But they're talking about how you're kind of just now bridging into that self, uh, like, self-power, that self-creativity. Almost in a way of, like, figuring out and realizing what you want. Um, there's a little bit of, like, this stagnation energy, not only off the hangman, but also off of this, like, four of cups. Like, there's this stagnation. It's a little bit of, like, um, I don't know, just, just like, not not seeing it, not loving it, not liking it. Like, it's just like one of these kind of eh, uh, energies going on here. And it's almost like it, it's kind of giving like a lack of, uh, like don't know where to go. Don't know what to do versus like, I have all these options. I don't know how to choose. Like, it's almost like a lack of total and complete direction, but almost, almost so in that it's like you're keeping yourself like kind of with the blinders on of like these are the only options I can choose I can't do this I can't do this what do I do what do I do it's almost like you're kind of too narrow too narrowly focused on something in front of you that you're missing other things that's the way that they're kind of bringing it in here is like you're narrowly now now row Lee now row Lee focusing on something that's in front of you and you're missing things kind of off to the side that could also be potential options. So they're saying that that's that limiting. You're putting yourself in a box and something that you're allowing yourself to do and you're not like considering, you're not keeping yourself open enough to things that would you wouldn't necessarily put in that box. Things that you wouldn't necessarily think would bring you uh, as much joy, as much happiness or things like that are kind of, you know, like, it, it's like out of your awareness is the way they're saying it. It's like out of your attention. It's so far on the peripherals that it doesn't matter because you got blinders on is kind of the way that they're saying it. I'm still kind of curious as if this conflict that keeps coming out is a conflict to where you're currently at or if it's a self-perpetuated conflict. Like a conflict inside of self. Um, it kind of just is coming in to um, one of these things like where it's almost like fighting yourself and it's like you can't quite choose. Like that's the way that I want to say it. And I feel like that's why this hangman's coming out. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's inside of yourself. <laughs> so it's inside of yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's inside yourself. I got the High Priestess. I got the Hermit card out here. I got the Eight of Pentacles, which is all about what you're supposed to do. I, like, literally want to tell you, like, I feel the need to tell you, like, you got to get out of your head. Like, I feel the need to tell you, you got to get out of your head and into your heart. It's not what are you supposed to do, it's what do you want to do. And I feel like I can hear somebody be like, I don't know what I want to do. Are you willing to try something? Are you willing to not have it work? Because they're kind of talking about, like, it's almost like you feel like it's, it's almost like un unchangeable. That's the way that I kind of want to say it. It's like you're looking at it like it's unchangeable. So if you try something, you can't change your mind later. Like, there's, like, almost this finite... My back is getting so cold. It's almost this finiteness to the way that you're viewing it. And that's what they're talking about, about limiting yourself. Yeah. Sun card in reverse, lack of happiness, lack of confidence in whatever you choose. Girl, this is a you problem. This is a you problem. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. I feel like we might want to start asking some other questions. Um... <laughs> You're being called on a deep dive. You're being called on a deep dive. And the reason I say that is not only because we got the Hermit card out here, and we got the High Priestess, and I got the Stillness card, and we got the Challenge card, and we got the Inner Strength card, and we got the Inward Face card, and we got the Hangman card. They're literally talking about how this is something that you got to go inside, but they're literally saying it's like you got you to gotta learn yourself. You got to learn what you want. And they're talking about that you've never actually stopped long enough to learn what you want. They're calling it like your downfall, your pitfall of the way you've been moving. <laughs> you've never stopped enough and paused as to what you want. <laughs> you've never asked yourself, what do you want? Not what's going to make somebody else happy. Not what's going to make a lot of money. Not, no. Not what's going to make people proud. Not what might be easy. What do you want? They're saying you've never been able to ask answer that question. And that's why this is so difficult for you. They're talking about how your career is to... Is, they're talking about changing your perspective on how you think about your career. And they're talking about your career not being the end-all, be-all, but being the thing that builds the life you want. So they're, they're asking you right now, what life do you want? Like, what inspires you? What, what, what are your goals? Like, what, what are you trying to build? What are you trying to actualize? What are you trying to manifest? What do you pray for? Like, they're asking you these types of questions because that'll help you understand which career is a better move. But they're saying that you've never asked yourself any of those questions in the way of actually answering them honestly. And this is why it's hard, is because you've never taken that pause and looked inside. And they're talking about this as being part of your healing, because in order to do these things, you'd have to put yourself first. And they're talking about how you putting yourself first has not always been easy for you to do. It's not always been something that's been... Um, on the top of your priority. On the top of your priority list. They're talking about how you're kind of very structured. Um, but, like, you're creative. Like, I want to say that you're you're structured, but you're creative. Like, you're a very creative person. What inspires you? What inspires you? I'm going to be honest, they're talking about how for you, your career, your career just isn't a career. It's not just uh, a thing. They're talking about how you're not somebody who can just go to a job because it serves it, uh, like an ends, like meets the ends meet, um, serves a purpose. They're talking about how it really has to ignite passions for you in order to have long jet, shut up, shut up. The self-centered car with a nine, like. Like, they're 
there's just this limiting part to this. And we have this volcano out here. And I feel like they're wanting you to release... I feel like they're wanting you to release some things. And I feel like part of it's a fear. Part of it's the uncertainty of the hows behind things. Are you, like, in the middle... Are you, like, in the middle of deciding if something's worth it or not? And I mean, like, worth it as being, like, worth, worth the risk. Because I have this victory card that's out here. That's coming out of the strength card. And when we're talking about this victory card... Coming from this strength. Your strength is your fire. Your strength is your passion. And I really feel like they're telling you to lead with that. Do you like... Have you given up on like your first option? And you're now trying to struggle for a second? Like is this what is this, what this conflict is? Is this what you don't know is? Like are we giving up on our dream... And finding a close second, like, because it's kind of, it's kind of giving, like, a little bit of, uh, dissatisfaction, and I really feel like this is kind of why, why all of this conflict is in here, all this indecision, all this trapped energy is, is coming back around again. If to follow your passion is what brings you victory, then anything short of your passion will not bring victory. So it sounds to me like there's no second option. So what is it going to take? Let's, let's do it this way. What is it going to take for you to follow your passion? Let's do it that way. Good Lord. I got the abundance card out here, but it's also talking about seated next to this emperor. I'm not getting it as being anything tied to a uh, outside masculine. I'm getting it more being your discipline. Now I do have the Knight of Pentacles out here and paired with the abundance card. I do. It does make me feel like slow growth funds. Like it makes me feel like, um, because they're both in reverse that um, you're questioning the lack of funds, maybe. Um, and because pentacles move so slow, it's almost like... It's almost like they're almost not moving for you, is the way that I want to say it. They're almost not coming quick enough. And this is what has you second-guessing everything. This is what has you kind of stuck and not following your star card, not following your passions... But part of this emperor face up for me, especially in this, is your discipline. So what are we going to do to help along to help along your finances? That's the way that I want to say it. What are we going to do to help along your finances? So how do we alleviate and help bring in better abundance? Maybe that's what we're going to do. Well, the very first card is to stop stressing about it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. The very first card is to stop stressing about it. <laughs> it's already in transition. It's already moving towards you. Like, they're talking about it's already moving towards you. This, like, world card in reverse, paired with this earned success, it's got a lot of fear behind it. It's got a lot of, of weighing it out behind it. It's got a lot of hesitation behind it. Um, and this is what brings me right back to this freaking hangman. Dude, are, we, are you afraid of something? Like... It is is are, are we afraid of the risk? Like are we, are, like, 
Sorry, wrong deck. So we're we're afraid of the risk. We're afraid of the potential failure. We're afraid of of kind of having to admit defeat if it doesn't go well. You have to take Jesus. Hold on, I got the stupid puzzle piece thing. Um, sometimes my team's awesome because they tell me to look at the screen at like the perfect moments. Like literally I just had a puzzle piece that was like, well, we're going to end your live in 10 seconds. Wild. It's just giving this like, imi like intimidation. It's giving like this intimidation energy surrounding this. I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel like this isn't gonna work though. You have the victory card out in, in four different decks. It sounds like what you're really lacking is the enthusiasm to go after it. The enthusiasm to to risk it. It's that blind leap of faith. like. But that's the thing and that's just part of the... This is why we have the Hierophant out here. It's that knowing. It's the consistency. It's the, it's the belief. It's the faith in knowing that it's going to work out because you say so. Like it's already yours. Like... And I feel like that's why you had the hangman out so many times is because they're asking you to switch your perspective. The more you sit there griping over the fact that it's a risk and there's a potential chance is the more that you are manifesting and feeding the timeline where it don't work is the more that you're giving energy to the failure than you are the success. Hold up to your bullshit. <laughs> About that time, I'm bullish. I know, you know, you lie. I'm gonna be honest. They're talking about your need to be ambitious. They're talking about your need, your need to go after your goal here. I'm gonna be honest. They're talking about your success is paired with your passion. So. You either need to ask yourself the question, what am I truly passionate about? Or you have that question and they're telling you not to settle for less. Because everything out here is how it's within your reach, but you just don't see it. Like that's how that's how the whole read is coming. It's in your reach, but you don't see it. And the confusion energy, that back and forth, is what you're doing in your head. Because to you it almost doesn't seem, like I want to say the word obtainable, it almost doesn't seem realistic. And that's where you're keeping yourself in a box. That's where you're keeping yourself limited because you're telling yourself what's allowed to occur and what's not. And you're basically telling yourself that you're not allowed your passions. You're telling every energy, the universe, yourself, that you're not allowed your passions. So there's space for everything. So if you feel like you need to start slowly, then start slowly. But start. Don't not start. Because they're talking about that you need to kind of go in with your with your heart and your soul here. And that's why we have so much emotional energy. That's why we have so much fiery energy here. Is because those are the two things that bring you victory. It brings you through your connection. It brings you victory. And it's not always the easiest thing to see one to one on the clock. But that's what they're talking about. Miss Allie. I'm going to go back through all these comments. If you need something clarified or something like that, please let me know. I'm going to scroll back through, though. Thank you so much for all the follows, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, whatever comes up, I'm lost about my career. 
I have options that I'm being pulled in opposite directions by my monkey brain. I know what I, I know what I, wait a minute. Hold on. That's quite the statement. Hold on. I'm being pulled in opposite directions, but I know what I want. So then why are we letting ourselves be pulled in opposite directions if you know what you want? I know what I want to do. The money ain't there. So we're, we're debating settling for a, for a close second. Don't do it. Don't settle for a close second. Yes, I'm about to leave my career for something I actually want to do. I can actually help others. But my brain is screaming not to do it. I love my current career at the same time. I'm making pretty good money now. And I don't want to lose the money with no potential upside. Oh. Thank you for the follow. Um... So then, maybe your question should, shouldn't should have been, maybe your question should be, should you have left? Is leaving your career in your greatest, highest good? One, two, three on the clock. Every card but two is the yes card out on this table. And the only cards that aren't is the transition card and the guilt card. <laughs> They're taught like you have your chariot out here, which is you following what you're supposed to be doing. It's it's success, it's it's overcoming obstacles. You also have your Pentacles card out here. You have your Nine of Pentacles. That's also your success. That's your independence. That's your stability. That's your security. It sounds like should you leave, it's going to work out fine. But being that there is Pentacles out here, and Pentacles is after... Or Pentacles is before transition and after justice... It's kind of talking about how you're kind of resisting the shift right now. But Pentacles is slow moving, so it's going to be a slow grow. It's going to be a slow grow. But Pentacles is about abundance. It's about reward. It's about receiving what you give. It's about, like, you know what I mean? And then that paired with justice tells me that it's going to work out. And you're going to be fulfilled. I had the Ten of Cups out. You're going to be fulfilled, but it's not going to be overnight. If that makes sense, Miss Allie. Do you have any other questions, Miss Allie? Well, I'm glad it was helpful. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your time, your space, and your precious energy today. We are going to head out of here. It has been quite the time on TikTok. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you guys are not following us on Instagram, go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Um, we're doing all the things over there, and we have completely different content. So go ahead and check it all out. We have a website. It's www.childabalance.com. Wish me luck with this interview. Have a great day. Oh, my God. Best of luck. Best of luck, and I want a full report. <laughs> best of luck, and I want a full report. Thank you so much for your time, your energy spent here. Thank you so much for your love, your follows, your shares, your gifts. It is much appreciated. And I will hopefully see you guys tonight around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. <laughs>